welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting tonight's show. We've got a flood advisory out uh, here for the, uh, actually, Tanana Valley, but for the uh, Chena, Chathamica, and Tanana Rivers, and that's out through Thursday morning, and uh, due to the uh, one to two and a half inches of rain that has fallen there since Sunday. Looking for another possible inch in those basins tonight into early tomorrow. And uh, then it should start tapering off tomorrow afternoon. But uh, look for some local minor flooding to occur in those basins. Uh, again, that advisory out through Thursday morning. And moving on to fire danger. Nothing north of the mountains here, but uh, kind of expanding. Uh, so sit in the valley in toward uh, Palmer and much of the Kenai Peninsula looking at high fire danger now as well as northeastern Bristol Bay from about uh, oh, around Port Allsworth back down Iliamna on in toward King Sam and Dillingham where temperatures rose into the lower 70s this afternoon both at Dillingham, Dillingham and King Salmon and also over the northern panhandle areas of high fire danger uh, persist. And satellite imagery <clears throat> showing westerly flow carrying uh, clouds with the uh, rain right through the central interior back out across the Seward Peninsula. Cooler air back to the north and the very warm conditions to the south with a lot of sunshine. Had some uh, clouds breaking off, a lot of mid and high level clouds dropping southward, kind of shearing off and then breaking up this afternoon, shifting over Prince William Sound, but just variable middle and high stuff there. Uh, the rain clouds back up along the main band to the north and then uh, a lot of lower stuff in across the north slope in the Arctic coast clearing out some here over the eastern Brooks Range as well as back to the northwest there and uh, pretty good day some sunshine Alaska Peninsula even uh, eastern Aleutians rising into the 60s this afternoon at Unalaska and a very warm day here across the southeast coast with the uh, low cloud deck just offshore there and uh, a lot of sunshine temperatures in the 70s to mid 80s down in that area and then back to the west you can see the clouds gathering here with the next storm system will be pushing into the Aleutians tonight with some uh, gale force winds and rain as it uh, rolls on up to the northeast on the chart today that's still uh, the main low center still off the chart this afternoon otherwise high pressure continues to dominate the bearing out there with light winds and uh, areas of sunshine like at uh, ADAC this afternoon, clear skies, but uh, variable clouds, but not really too bad there. Again, uh, light winds, dry conditions for the peninsula and the eastern Aleutians. Fog for the Pribilofs, a lot of low clouds and fog here. Some of that shifting into the southwest coast. And then the uh, main front right up through that area with the rain from the upper Tanana Valley, northeast interior. Back on out across the uh, Norton Sound area now, most of that shifted south of uh, just about all of the uh, Seward Peninsula there, but still carrying some rain at Nome. They picked up in the last 24 hours uh, about two thirds of an inch, while Fairbanks picked up uh, 86 hundredths of an inch in the 24 hour period ending at four o'clock this afternoon. And uh, rainfall, similar rainfall amounts all along the central interior. Again, breaking out the showers, a couple isolated thunderstorms in the far northeast. Those have since shot over to the Mackenzie River Delta area and a uh, little bit of uh, low clouds, maybe some drizzle on the western Arctic coast, and Barrow carried S-minus in their observation, which uh, means flurries 
during the afternoon hours the temperature is still uh, 35 6 or 7 degrees up in that area and the sunshine here for the southeast coast fog right off the coast there variable high clouds but a lot of uh, sunshine northwest winds uh, 25 to 35 miles an hour blowing across kodiak island that drove the temperature up to uh, 77 degrees this afternoon at kodiak state airport and similar weather pattern offshore flow allowed the temperature at seward to rise to 84 degrees and that was uh, the warmest location in the state uh, this afternoon I, uh, there was one other location we'll get to that at the I see the temperature maps for tonight not much change here uh, mostly clear mild conditions still windy gales out for the barren islands uh, windy for kodiak island no change really out here over the bering sea northern bering on into bristol bay just look for an increase in the low clouds and fog maybe some sprinkle or uh, shower activity along the peninsula Clouds uh, increasing here over the southern southeast coast, uh, becoming mostly cloudy, kind of a marine layer, kicking off uh, maybe some light precipitation, even up here around the Elfin Cove area. And another weak trough dropping along the north slope there. Look for uh, IFR conditions, mainly out along the coastline, areas of light precipitation along that. And then the main frontal boundary here starting to weaken and break up, but rain continuing over the northeast interior back through the Tanana Valley maybe a touch farther to the south with the whole band now beginning to narrow and it's right up against the Alaska range on the precipitation and some clouds will still spill south of the mountains there from time to time but uh, looks like the Seward Peninsula out of the rain now high pressure keeping it uh, fair with light winds up over the northwest interior and here's that next storm pushing northeastward gale force winds and rain along with fog right up in across that area and some of that moisture spreading over to Nikolsky later on tonight. And then tomorrow that system, low center stays back out to the west. The frontal system drives northward. So rain and a little bit of breezy conditions will push into the Pribilof Islands with fog. Look for a warm front type weather to sweep across the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, light rain, fog or drizzle in that area, low clouds all the way back to Adak and Atka. Gale force winds in the forecast are 30 to 35 knots. Actually, the gales are back here with that main low center. I believe 30 knots is out for tomorrow for the central Aleutians. And uh, again, this uh, tr front continues to deteriorate. By late tomorrow afternoon, becoming more showery, less heavy, more intermittent on the rain through the uh, central eastern Tanana Valley. Maybe a few showers down over the northeast uh, Copper River Basin, Mbezna, and those areas. And then the main rain area, lighter, but still persisting here from just about the northern Cuscoma Valley all the way back out to St. Lawrence Island. Still kind of hugging the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula and drier conditions to the north and that trough continues to weaken along the eastern Brooks Range. Basically high pressure back through this area and a little breezier on the eastern Arctic coast. The panhandle looks uh, partly to mostly cloudy or mostly cloudy, maybe a few breaks, but nothing like today and showers mainly along the eastern border or up to the north. And uh, another nice warm day here for South Central Alaska with the uh, low in the Gulf here over toward Cape Yakutaga. Northwest winds, higher pressure to the west. Another sunny warm day for Kodiak uh, on up across South Central Alaska. Variable clouds in the Madnuska Susitna Valley. And moving on to Wednesday's outlook. Uh, more clouds, a few more showers there for the panhandle. Uh, fog right off the coast and low clouds all the way up to the North Gulf Coast now. Uh, kind of a weak low over northern Prince William Sound, a weak trough actually. So that's going to allow uh, marine stratus to develop more along the North Gulf Coast, possibly into Prince William Sound, but call it a partly sunny day for uh, Copper River Basin, uh, Susitna Valley into the inlet. Still dry, showers back here along the Alaska Range and showers lingering over the central and eastern Tanana Valley. Uh, should be pretty sunny up here to the north across the upper Yukon uh, portion of the Brooks Range and then back to the northwest with that offshore flow there around the south side of that high. Could be some pretty sunny conditions all the way out to the coastline extending down into Kivalina, Kotzebue. Pick up a few clouds over the uh, Seward Peninsula but uh, could get some clearing in advance of this front as it lifts northward but definitely the rain driving into Bristol Bay pushing inland. Uh, here over to Lake Iliamna in the afternoon. Just a chance of some light rain reaching mostly the west side of Kodiak Island uh, in the afternoon. This front precipitation, gusty southwest winds trailing back to the southwest right across the eastern Aleutians, but breaking out behind this system, probably strong enough to kind of mix out some of that 
persistent low clouds and fog out over the Bering Sea. So it could be some partial clearing or some sunshine there for the eastern, maybe even the western Aleutian areas. Temperatures this afternoon across the southeast coast, uh, 59 at Elfin Cove in the marine deck there, 67 at Sitka, and uh, 78 degrees down at Heidelberg, while uh, Metlakatla at 75. Let's see, that 80 degree reading was at Cake, Juneau, not uh, very close with 79, 65 in Yakutat, 66, uh, Cordova, Valdez up to 73, and then some 80s showing up. Uh, <clears throat> 84 at Delta or at uh, Big Lake and Willow, as well as Seward, and uh, 82 at Nanilchik, uh, 73 in Seldovia with 60 or no 73 at Golcana, 64 at Northway, 50s here with the clouds and rain through the central interior all the way back out to the Seward Peninsula. Then with more clearing to the north uh, into the mid to upper 60s here from the Upper Yukon Valley. Actually, a couple of 70s showing up there at. Uh, Beaver, yeah, Beaver reached, I think, above 70, 67 at Bettles, uh, North Slope and Arctic Coast in the 40s this afternoon with Barrow down to 37, just 39 at Kaktovik, uh, mostly in the 50s here all along the West Coast at 56 at McGrath and a uh, 54 there at St. Michael, 50 degrees Savunga, lower to mid 50s here over the Pribilofs and the Alaska Peninsula. Sunshine, mid-60s, uh, clouds, upper 50s, with uh, Unalaska at 63, 50s all the way out to the west. And for the lows tonight, uh, 30s along the coast, north slope, and then south of the Brooks Range, 50s. Mid to upper 50s, the near 60s, south central Alaska, maybe Kodiak Island in the windier areas. 50s for the Aleutians, uh, near 50 for the Pribilofs, and 50s for the southeast coast. Highs tomorrow, cooler now, still uh, possible 70s here in the north, but generally starting a cooling trend there with a little more clouds. And uh, that uh, would, should do it there. Risk of showers mostly tonight, maybe tomorrow, but nothing uh, too heavy. 70s again to near 80, uh, Copper River Basin south of the Alaska Range. Nice 70s down across Kodiak and into Bristol Bay. Cooler up to the north, but in the 50s and 30s on the central Arctic coast. Flying weather. Persistent band of moisture here, starting out with some IFR there, and especially back toward the uh, Yukon Delta Coast Norton Sound area. And from the Pribilofs and uh, increasing IFR with that incoming system over the western Aleutians, marginal VFR uh, here over the southern southeast coast, and that is forecast to advance northward tomorrow afternoon. Uh, may or may not reach uh, Northern Link Canal, it could, but just a possibility. Some marginal VFR there on the North Slope and IFR mostly off the Arctic coast. Still VFR here, the Southwest Coast, Kodiak Island, and then the IFR advancing up to the Pribilofs and persisting St. Lawrence Island, again into Norton Sound. Passes Anatovic, marginal VFR tomorrow. Same forecast for Adigan, Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR. Rainy, marginal VFR in the Western entrance, otherwise pretty good and windy, marginal VFR becoming VFR as that uh, frontal boundary weakens. Isabel VFR, Mintasta VFR as well, Tanita open, Portage, another open day there, Chilkoot and White again. Uh, VFR through much of the day possibly becoming marginal, maybe late in the afternoon. And then the freezing levels, uh, quite a thermal gradient across the state from 16,000 feet just off the coast of Kodiak, uh, to 2,000 feet up along the Arctic coast there, uh, much less of that uh, gradient out over the Bering Sea where it's 10 to 12,000 feet. Icing threats uh, with that incoming system, gotta get way up there to 14,000 feet before you get any light rime icing uh, for the Eastern Aleutians on up to the Pribilofs, 9,000 feet back to the west, uh, some above 10,000 feet here uh, over the uh, Norton Sound area into maybe the northern Cuscombe Valley and then just some leftover areas here diminishing throughout the day up over the eastern and northeast interior. Jet stream, strong flow, easterly or westerlies, west to east, 100 knots there through the interior. Kind of another branch here at 70 knots cutting across Bristol Bay and Kodiak Island, keeping it windy for another day in those areas. And then here's that incoming system, southwest 120 knots bringing the gales into the far western Aleutians. 9,000 foot winds, uh, westerly 15 to 25 here through the central interior. Again, a narrow band of that lighter, west 40 knots on the eastern Arctic coast there. Pretty light winds for the panhandle, and those be coming southeast, so that'll probably carry some of that cloud deck inland there, especially across Dixon Entrance. 
and up the inside waters. 3,000 feet, same pattern, westerlies, uh, 10 to 25 knots through the interior. High pressure, lighter winds, southwest coast, 30 to 45 knots here for the coming across the Aleutian Range, Kodiak and the Barrens again, and southerlies, 40 to 45 knots there for the central Aleutians. And moving on to turbulence, again with the uh, stronger winds and that storm coming up, occasional moderate chop here from Atka, below 5,000 feet out to Shimi and Atu, with uh, light turbulence advancing over to the eastern Aleutians tomorrow afternoon, staying south of the Pribilofs, and then that continued westerly flow could be some areas of light to very isolated moderate chop below 4,000 feet, especially for small aircraft there through the central interior and uh, kind of skirting the eastern and central Arctic coast. And then those northwest winds keeping moderate turbulence possible here, Kamishak Bay right across Kodiak Island on the lee side of the Aleutian Range and those areas. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor. On behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, thank you to Alaska Public Media for allowing us to bring you Hangar Flying. We are glad you could join us this evening where we are happy to have Noreen Price back on our program. She is a new accident investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board. Welcome back, Noreen. Thank you. So on our last show, we talked about how um, you got started in aviation and a little bit about your background in the Navy. A lot of people in aviation appreciate the investigations and the reports that the National Transportation Safety Board issues after accidents and incidents. And I know a lot of pilots look forward to reading those. Did you always know that you wanted to be an accident investigator or work at the NTSB? I don't think anybody knows when they're young that they want to be an accident investigator. It's one of those things when you're in aviation, you start flying or maintaining airplanes and you lose a friend or two, um, you suddenly become engrossed in aviation safety. So I didn't always know it, but about 10 years ago, I had a real close call myself. And um, yeah, that day I really questioned my own abilities and how could I make such a terrible mistake and it kind of led me to a journey into human factors and accident investigation. Um, and then I went to Aviation Safety Officer School where they do accident investigation courses, um, lab training, um, operational risk management and uh, human factors training and I just really found specifically the human factors piece just fascinating and I really enjoyed it. Um, when I left the Navy, I, I went to University of Southern California. I went to some of their courses in safety and security and uh, accident investigation. And once again, I, in love, I love the investigative piece of it, taking the uh, technical pieces along with the human factors pieces uh, and looking at an uh, investigation uh, incident top to bottom. I, I really enjoy that type of work. So. So you had a lot of experience in the Navy and with your previous job mm -hmm. working in in safety in the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. Is there one experience that you think will be particularly helpful in preparing you for the NTSB job? One experience, I mean, my own, I think our own personal experience are the ones that are we hold deep in our hearts. Um, one was a friend of mine who died and he was, uh, you know, one of these awesome pilots, the people with lots of hours, lots of experience, great leader, great friend, you think that person will never take a perfectly good plane and fly it into the ground. And he did one day, and I saw it on TV. So those sort of things make you think, you know, if people like that can have an accident, certainly any one of us can have a bad day. And if we're not on top of our game when that bad day comes, it's going to be a bad day for us, too. That experience stayed with me, and it still stays with me till this day. And I've had my own close calls that made me think about all the things that happened that day that I had control of, that I didn't mitigate when I should have. So. Um, those are two kind of experiences that I think I'll take with me on this job. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right when we see somebody that we've looked up to, our heroes, our mentors, and see something mm -hmm. bad happen to them, we realize 
how it could indeed happen to us. Absolutely, yes, nobody's perfect. Exactly, mm -hmm. and we can all have a bad day. Yes. <laughs> um, so you mentioned human factors um, a little bit mm -hmm. earlier. Is that one area that you hope to uh, work with um, and specialize in or have a special focus within the NTSB? Well, as investigators uh, in the regional level, which I do, we, we, we're everything pretty much. We mm -hmm. don't focus on one particular area, but the area within human factors that I have a high interest in is, uh, is fatigue, and it's on one of the NTSB's most wanted lists this year. It's worth looking at on the NTSB site if you haven't done that yet. But here in Alaska, it's very interesting because of the circadian rhythms and the daylight darkness issues. I know personally, I have issues with fatigue in Alaska, <laughs> and I know everybody does. I'm always talking about pilots about how how do you manage this fatigue issue? Um, and when it comes to the commercial operations, they have certain requirements, mm -hmm. right? But all the private pilots, the GA pilots, you know, they don't. 135 operators don't have, have to have fatigue management programs. So those are areas that I'm particularly interested in because we, we all have to pay attention to the fatigue, not just the commercial operators. So I will be looking closely at those issues when I see them. But Oh, good. We'll look forward to hearing more mm -hmm. about fatigue in the um, accident reports then mm -hmm. and, and some um, pretty thorough look backs, which I know the NTSB does yes. after there's been a, a fatal mm -hmm. um, accident. Um, quickly, is there one piece of information that you would give to somebody who is looking for a career with the NTSB? I would say stick closely to the NTSB.gov site. There are a lot of great resources on that site, and I think the best thing you can do is really read the accident reports mm -hmm. when they come out. Look at everything from the um, preliminary reports to the factual reports uh, to probable cause, and then um, there's also a lot of training that's available with the NTSB. Uh, there's safety compass online, safety alerts online. You can sign up for all those things, and I think if you were interested in that type of work, that'd be a great place to start. Okay, thank you for that bit of advice. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. And thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your support and we appreciate you tuning in to Hangar Flying. Until next time, fly safely. Welcome back. Looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, still quite an area here of heavy ice right into the barrel area and with those west northwest winds it's going to continue to uh, kind of push on in along the coastline there mostly near barrow uh, through wednesday and then on wednesday actually the flow switches around becomes uh, easterly and so things will probably change uh, later in the week but still uh, some good ice here off to the east and along the uh, at least a stretch of the eastern beaufort sea before it uh, opens up here over toward uh, kaktovik and on to the east for uh, marine forecast, very light winds for tomorrow here along the outer coastline, those marine areas south to southwest at 10 knots, seas 6 feet, and light southeast to south winds uh, inside waters with 10, or at 10 to 15 knots with uh, 2 to 3 foot seas. And uh, for Wednesday, southerly now at 15 here along the coast, southeast, still light for the north coast, and uh, southeast 15, Clarence Strait, Inside waters here on up through northern Lincoln Canal south at 15 or variable to south at 15 with three foot seas. And then for Prince William Sound, northwest 15, three foot seas tomorrow, Cook Inlet northwest 10 to 15. Gales continue, Kamishak Bay tomorrow as well as the Barrens for west northwest 35 knots, 10 foot seas. And uh, Wednesday pretty brisk there in the east side of Kodiak Island at 30 knots. And then for Tuesday, uh, westerlies 10 to 15 there for Cook Inlet with two to three foot seas. Lighter winds, variable to west, Prince William Sound, two foot seas, light variable for the North Gulf Coast. And uh, small craft advisories continue for Kamishak Bay right down across the Barrens, uh, coming down a little bit, but not all that much, just on the uh, underside of the Gale Threshold there. Southwest 20 for Shillikoff Strait, small craft advisories there for the uh, east side of Kodiak Island. And for Bristol Bay, west at 24 foot seas, 25 knot winds from Castle Cape to Sitkanak tomorrow. That's good for a small craft advisory there, otherwise lighter winds for the peninsula. And then uh, small craft advisories now from Cape Sarachev up to Sitkanak, west 25 knots, roughly 8 to 9 foot sea, southwest 20 here for the north side of the peninsula, lighter in Bristol Bay. 
And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, southwesterlies 20 to 25, 68 foot seas, and then gales here south to southeast, 35 knots for the central Aleutians with the gales that looks like on the south side, but uh, 35 to 40 knot winds there across Damchitka, Kiska, on out to Shimia. And then for Wednesday, those winds, as the low pulls northward, swing around to the west southwest, 25 to 30 knots here, all the way over toward Nikolsky. And actually for the Fox Islands, south southwest, 25 to 30 knots with 9 to foot 13 foot seas. And for the southwest coast, west southwest, 15, 5 foot seas, uh, small craft advisory, St. Lawrence Island, otherwise lighter, south 15, northern Bering Sea, south 20 for the Pribilofs. And then uh, small craft advisories enter the scene here for St. Paul and St. George and south to southwest at 20 for the uh, southwest coast. Lighter winds now for St. Lawrence Island, but picking up to about 20 knots here for St. Matthew Island. And gales are out for the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline here over to Demarcation Point, uh, 35 knots out of the west. Small craft or brisk wind advisories, excuse me, for the uh, central coast and then much lighter here down to the west. And then for uh, Wednesday, switch direction, 10 knots here, Wales to Cape Thompson. And then from Cape Thompson up the west side there, easterlies at 20 knots, four foot seas. And then you swing around to the northwest, starting on the central coast with uh, west northwesterlies coming down from tomorrow's speeds at 20 to 25 knots. And then for uh, tonight's forecast, this area of rain continues through the central interior, flood advisory out I believe through Thursday morning for the uh, Chena, Tanana, and Chattanooga River basins for possible or for some minor flooding to occur. Uh, more showery, uh, showery back to the north with less precipitation and stays windy again. Kodiak Island with those gales. Here comes a storm into the far western Aleutians. And then that pushes eastward here and lifts northward for the gales and rain out that area. This uh, area becoming less rainy over the eastern interior, but some pretty good showers into the afternoon. Uh, sunny and warm southern Alaska, Kodiak Island, mostly cloudy for the Panhandle. Add a few showers to that the next day. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future.